Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Hello and welcome. Could Mars be the next big destination for, for a human colony? It's a question being asked now as planet Earth celebrates 40 years since man first stepped on the moon. Ironically, in spite of all the technological advances since then, no one's been back since the Apollo missions. Neil Armstrong's 1969 walk on the moon was a milestone in space exploration, but it was only four years ago that America's National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, announced an ambitious plan for its astronauts to return to the moon by 2020 as a possible stepping stone to landing on Mars. Critics of the Constellation program, as it's called, have said the proposal is unrealistic given its technical problems and multi-billion dollar price tag, both of which are being currently scrutinized. And while a global effort has made projects like the International Space Station successful, some still feel that the glamour and awe of NASA's Apollo program has never been repeated. On the 40th anniversary of Apollo 11, we look at the future of manned space travel and ask, is moon exploration still a worthwhile goal or should our efforts be focused on deeper space? Remember, you can join our conversation with your questions and comments. Log on to livestation.com forward slash AJE. You can enter the chat room and take part. And of course, you can also phone into the show as well. Yeah. well joining me now from Houston is Pam Melroy, NASA astronaut and retired colonel in the US Air Force. She commanded the Space Shuttle Discovery and piloted two other Space Shuttle missions. And from Boston, I'm joined by Dr. Farouk Albaz, a geologist who worked with NASA's Apollo program, training the astronauts in lunar observations and helping to select the landing sites. He's currently director of the Center for Remote Sensing at Boston University. And here in Washington, D.C. is Anusha Ansari, the first private female space explorer and first Muslim woman in space. Ms. Ansari spent eight days aboard the International Space Station as part of a Soyuz mission. I welcome you all to the program and start with uh, Colonel Pam Melroy in, uh, in Houston there. Uh, of course, as someone who spent so much time in, in, in the industry of space, if you like, and is so familiar with the space program, what does this anniversary represent? What do you think, um, how significant is it, do you think, to the field of space exploration? Well, thank you for inviting me here today as we all celebrate this momentous anniversary. Uh, for us, I think it's particularly exciting this year, and I can see that around the world because we're talking about going back to the moon. And I think that's why it makes this particular anniversary so incredibly exciting and poignant at the same time. But Colonel, for nearly four decades to get back, I mean, considering how much technology has moved on, is it, is it really a celebration or is it really a bit of a, a commiseration that we haven't got back there yet? Well, I think it's important to realize that we have a lot of things to learn in low Earth orbit. Um, it's a little bit like traveling. You can go far away from your hometown and come back to your hometown and find that you have a lot to learn there too. But inevitably will come a time when you're ready to travel again. And I think that's where we're at now. Well, uh, Dr. Farouk Albaz, good to speak with you again. You've been on the show with us before, sir. I, I, I wonder what's your take on the fact it's, it's not really been a priority for, for NASA, for anyone really, to get back to the moon in all this time. 40 years since the first landing, it's, it's a long, long stretch. I really think it is because Apollo had a very specific goal. It's to reach the moon, send a man to the moon and bring him back safely to Earth. And <clears throat> it had a very specific time frame within this decade. So it was something to do within 10 years and it was done. It was done beautifully. And that was it. From there on, we began to think, how do we apply the knowledge we gain from lunar exploration to the understanding of the Earth from orbit and exploring, exploring other planets. Now, uh, Dr. Elbaz, we had a, a question from Twitter from the, uh, uh, one of our viewers in Bahrain who says, I'm not one to believe in conspiracy theories. However, how come we've not made it back to the moon since the first landing? Now, you explain that, but I, I have to throw this out. Otherwise, I know someone's going to say you didn't ever touch on it. But how do you address all those conspiracy theories that it was really a political game and that there was not necessarily any landing, just, uh, just a, an effort to show America's strength? And what do we say about the, the astronauts that went and, and conversed with us for six days while they were on the moon <laughs> picking up very specific sites? I selected the sites. I know the details of these sites, and they told us about it. And the, 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 the cringe of it all is the fact that they brought back to the Earth samples of the moon, the likes of which 
do not exist on the Earth. So where did this come from? All right. Well, I'm going to ask you more about where space travel is going in a moment, but let me welcome in uh, Anusha Ansari as well, um, who's here in Washington, D.C. with me. There's, there's so much talk about the public getting involved in space travel, and of course, um, as, as the first female space explorer uh, up there, what was, for you, what was the most fulfilling aspect of the trip? Well, uh, I think uh, it was wonderful so, uh, that I could share my experience with a lot of young people around the world because space has been so out of touch for everyone that I think part of the problem we face is that the public has lost somewhat interest in space because it's something right. out there and they can't relate to it personally. So what I was able to do is relate a lot of personal experience on a daily basis through a blog that I was doing with everyone and that brought a lot of attention to uh, my trip and again back to the space station and I use that as a launching pad to get more kids interested in space, in technology, and in science. I think 50 million plus hits you had. Yes, yeah? yes. Now, did you get a sense, having gone through all the, the rigors yourself of getting up there, did you get a sense that space travel is something that could be for everyone? Absolutely. I don't think people who go to space are superhumans. They're just, I'm a normal person and I've been able to do it. It of course requires, especially if you're going to orbit, requires a lot of training preparation. You have to be in good health. But uh, I think what we started out 40 years was to open the space frontiers. And it wasn't just so we have a few people going to space. It was to open the frontiers for everyone. And we haven't done that. You had a, you had a bit of resistance, I think, at a professional level from some of those on the uh, mission with you initially about you going up as a sort of civilian, but but I think you managed to quash their, their concerns. How, yeah, what I, happened? Uh, I think, well, uh, a lot of professional astronauts, uh, they worry that if someone is up there and they're not uh, trained adequately, that they could cause danger to the program. And uh, I think that they have some basis to have that type of uh, fear. But again, if we spend the time training the individuals who want to go to space, there is no reason why they couldn't prepare for this trip. And uh, I don't think they would pose any more danger than anyone else uh, that's going to space. Well, Colonel uh, Pam Melroy, if I can get back to you there in Houston, uh, I'm curious how you feel about uh, the way things are progressing now. There's interest revived in, in the potential for a space program. And, and I'm curious how you feel about private enterprise coming in and, and, and taking a chunk of space, so to speak. I mean, Lockheed and Boeing are already suggesting they could provide uh, an alternative to the Ares program. Uh, uh, for someone who's you know there on the inside how do you feel about that well the astronaut office in general thinks that competition is really good for business we're excited uh, that there are all these other opportunities to go to space i think it's um it's different uh, for the space program for nasa we have a responsibility to the taxpayer to be as safe as we possibly can and also to dream big dreams uh, for the United States and for the whole world. So it's a different type of program when you start getting into commercial. I think uh, that there are some more risks that we will see, just like we saw in the infancy of the aviation world uh, when people first started flying commercial aviation. Um, it was fairly risky to start with, and I think that's where we're at right now, too. Well, I wonder, Colonel, you know, considering the conditioning you go through as a professional astronaut, I wonder um, how easy you think it would be, personally, to, to create a regular a program where citizens could be in space. Well, I think, uh, again, it's, it's really about the risk. Uh, people have to be willing to accept the risks for the tremendous rewards of going into space. Their personal rewards, and there are technical rewards, the science that you can do in space, uh, the very unique aspect of looking at our Earth, uh, but also the aspect of working together in a joint venture um, that uh, Ms. Ansari re referred to, that feeling that you have to have as you work together, and that you're relying on each other, that your lives depend on each other. Uh, that experience is actually a very important part of it, and I think that's a universal uh, human desire is to be a part of a family or a team. And so I, I think that we'll be able to get there, um, again, if we're willing to accept the risk. Well, of course, Apollo 11 and the Apollo missions raised expectations so, so much. And Buzz Aldrin, who was the second man to step on the moon, uh, I interviewed him a little while back uh, for my one-on-one -on -one program. This is what he had to say about where things have, become, have gone. We did some studies as to what programs would be like in the future. And uh, there was a slow, a medium, and a fast program. Uh, and it was somewhat measured by how soon uh, we would be able to send people to Mars. And uh, the FAST program would have been sometime in the mid to late 80s, and uh, the, uh, the, the, the slow program, we certainly would have gotten to Mars by the year 2000. So that was the expectation. Now, certainly when we don't, aren't able to live up to that, 
uh, people are uh, a little disappointed that it hasn't gone the way we thought. And I wonder, Dr. Farukal Baz, whether expectations were raised too high, uh, and how you feel about the idea that perhaps uh, the moon is no longer of interest. It's now it should be a mission straight to Mars. Uh, before I answer this, I would like to let you know that I am uh, very honored to be on the program after you introduced your other two guests, uh, Pamela, to command that space shuttle mission is no small joke, and, uh, and she is a role model to many American women, as well as uh, Anusha is also a role model to uh, uh, Muslim women in the Middle East. So these are wonderful people to have on some, a show like that. And what you s mentioned about the, uh, the excitement, yes, indeed, there was a great deal of excitement, and Buzz was correct in the fact that the program should not have ended the way it did very slowly and very gently we, and we lost a great deal of the respect and the interest of the uh, the people worldwide and maybe now with this 40th anniversary we can recapture the imagination of Americans as well as people worldwide okay we're gonna ask you some more questions but we're taking a short break right now as we pause let, rem let me remind you, you can join the conversation with your questions and comments by logging on to livestation.com and entering the chat room where you can see a debate is taking place right now. We'll be right back. Don't go away.